everybody once again. Okay, just James Olive is just becoming a major, major straw man argumenter. Like he basically uses straw man's in almost every argument. He's been construing the facts in order to form an opinion that is just blatantly wrong on most levels, if not almost every level. And now he seems to be it seems to have a favorite target, the Daily Wire. And this time, it's not Ben Shapiro, which who he attacks. He's been attacking a little bit more frequent lately. Like, in a, an example, the Trump tariffs, and you know how he, James just jumped, absolutely jumped on Ben right after the whole fiasco surrounding the Columbus Day video. Now he's jumping on Andrew Clavin, which makes absolutely no sense because he and Andrew Clavin are basically on the same side when it comes to the big man in the White House, Donald Trump. They're almost on the same exact same page. And James is basically saying that the Daily Wire is going full anti-white. Like, that makes any sense. Like, how, how, I mean, why, how does that make any sense? Are they advocating for, you know, white people actually getting replaced by a certain segment of the population? Or are they actually advocating for the death of white people? No, they're not. The advocating for anti-white, is are they advocating for white people to get banned on college campuses? No, of course they aren't. That's fucking. That's a fucking ridiculous notion. That's not how James sees it. James actually sees it as the Daily Wire is going anti-white just because they don't agree with me on identitarian politics. All right, which is causing him to basically go out and attack someone who is mostly an ally when it comes to Donald Trump. And I'm telling you, this video is pretty terrible because all he is doing is arguing for the racial politics that has been going on in the country for a while now and has basically become such a huge cancer that it is threatening to basically destroy the nation in a lot of ways. And so I'm going to skip the first couple minutes because the first couple minutes is just him ranting about Ben Shapiro, even though ironically he's not talking about Ben Shapiro in this video well, he's not attacking Ben Shapiro in this video. He's attacking Andrew Clavin, and he also attacks Michael Knowles just because of the Charlottesville stuff. I think this is in this entire video is also talking about Charlottesville and how James felt that he wasn't being treated fairly by Michael Knowles when he was on his show, which is idiotic. Like I said, most of the Daily Wire, at least from the podcast, two out of three of them mostly like Donald Trump. Okay. Ben Shapiro wrote a, he had a MAGA hat on at the behest of My, Michael Knowles after Neil Gorsuch was appointed Supreme Court Justice, so, okay, but yeah, so he just spends the first two minutes basically raging about how Ben was like unjustly attacking Trump during the 2016 election and stuff like that, and so I'm just going to skip all that because he shouldn't be addressing it. If you're going to attack one guy, just attack one guy. Or he even says that, why should I, he even says right after that little two minute rant ended, he's like, well, I, sh I shouldn't be, you know, really be addressing this issue, you all know my thoughts on it. Well, then stop telling us your thoughts on it when you already know your thoughts on it. Just shut up. So, I'm going to skip that little two minute briefer. Then, I'm going to go ahead, we're going to go ahead and listen to this debunking of Andrew Clavin's. Also, it's an Andrew Clavin comedy skit that Andrew doesn't take, when he normally does it, he doesn't take it seriously. He just uses it as a satirization of certain things going on around the world. At least that's what he did do. I don't remember if he still does it or not, but that's what he did do, and he did it during Charlottesville too. So let's go. Two identitarians, two white nationalists. And yes, there are differences. But let me say without fear or equips, there are differences between all uh, of I can't find the freaking... Anyone who believes that. Believing that all people should have a right to their own countries is not... ...that any movement that burns tiki... Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Okay. Okay, here we go. Dig into Andrew Clavin and the Daily Wire's overgeneralized, awful, and tragically unfunny all about white supremacists. So... Let's talk about the white supremacists. First of all, let me say without fear or equivocation that any movement that burns tiki torches but doesn't serve my ties is clearly on the wrong track. 
Tantric, buddy. We save the Mai Tais and Yin Wing for the after parties. And believe me, right wing after parties are the best after parties. Okay, minor gripe here, but you're saying that like he's not a person of the persuasion of right wing politics or isn't a conservative. That's blatantly idiotic. I don't see how Andrew Clavin is not a part of the right wing political sphere. Right, you see him, like, he, cr he routinely criticizes Hollywood. Like, he really does. Like, he goes all out when he talks about Hollywood half the time. And he's, I mean, and he's on Fox a fairly certain amount. So is everybody else on the Daily Wire that's a podcast host. So, I mean, I know that's only two examples, but still. I mean, he's a pretty conservative guy if you actually listen to his podcast. I mean, he doesn't like all this race politics going on. He doesn't like... And while he is more of a Trump supporter than anything, you're, you're really generalizing him to more of a douche. Even though, like I said, this is a comedy skit. Why are you responding to a comedy skit that is clearly meant to be satirized, meant to be a satirization, not a actual thing to be taken seriously? Awesome. Damn it. Oh, there's the whole hateful racist dirtbag thing. That's not so good either. Secondly, in their latest rally, many of these white supremacists were chanting, Jews will not replace us. If that's true, it's a tremendous disappointment. After all, if we could replace white supremacists with Jews, the IQ of the country would rise dramatically, and more people would be doctors and lawyers, instead of sitting around in their mother's basements, pleasuring themselves while staring at pictures of Hitler and calling it date night. Well, <laughs> where to start with this one? First of all, the chant in Charlottesville was overwhelmingly, you will not replace us, but there was a select contingent that decided to adopt the chant Clavin refers to here, and it was caught on camera by journalists from Vice. Now, that chant is of course a reference to the role that certain organizations and groups are playing in the demographic shift of the United States. And secondly, it... Uh, first of all, in response to your firstly, you will not replace us sounds pretty racist because it's going to, you know, talk about it's referencing a certain parts of the population that is so attributing to this so-called shift when it, tr it truly isn't there is no real i mean yes there is a little bit of a demographic shift i mean most of the texas is most of texas is really hispanic a lot of the inner city is mostly african-american but most of the country is still populated by you know, white people. So I don't get what you're getting at here, James, about how there's some type of demographic shift. All right, are you talking about a demo? If you're talking about demographic shift in culture, I mean, we I can go into that one all day. I think everybody on the right can go into that one all day. A lot of people on the right know that there is a huge cultural shift going on that is not really getting us anywhere. All right, we can talk about that all day. But if we're talking about an actual racial demographic shift, it's I mean, sorry to burst your bubble, but I mean, white people are still the majority for most things. So. Fairly disgusting that Clavin is wishing for a segment of the American population to be replaced. These people may have used rhetoric you dislike, Andrew, but do you really mean to say that Americans have no right to be concerned about demographic displacement? The notion that whites should be replaced by Jews in America, a historically 85% European and approximately 2% Jewish country, is absurd and borderline genocidal. Imagine for... Okay, and secondly, I have never seen the man do this. He is not actually advocating for any of this. I have not seen Andrew Clavin actually advocate at all for Jewish replacement of white supremacists and things like jobs or stuff like that, if they keep it to themselves, if they were, I mean... And there's probably a lot of people who are closeted white supremacists right now who are doing really successful. And if they keep it to themselves, let them keep it to themselves. All right? If they keep it out of the workplace, fuck it. Let them do it. We, don't, they, we may never find out throughout their entire lives until they release a memoir saying about how they hate the Jews. But I have not seen... I, I, actually, I'll leave a link to D Clavin's podcast about Charlottesville. Because I have seen, I, I mean, I watched the whole thing, and it, I watched the entire coverage of his, front to back, of every video of he, that he did for it, and he did not say a single damn thing about Jews actually replacing us, okay? Like I said, this is a comedy skit. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. Right, I don't think a whole lot of people 
would advocate for a segment of the population to just be replaced just because they think of a different ideology, all right? That's the entire, all right, there's this little thing called the United States Constitution, which Clavin also believes in. You're forgetting about that, boy. A political commentator saying that the Israeli population should be replaced by Swedes. This call for an erasure of an entire people would rightfully be decried as borderline yes. genocidal. A call for ethnic cleansing or population transfer, perhaps. Europeans and European Americans are the only groups in the world that can be talked about this way and have it not be seen as hateful. Oh, and by the way, we don't need more lawyers. We have more than enough already. Okay, now, James does has a point that most, the, most of the people who get talked to about this type of stuff is normally whites, mostly white Europeans and white Americans and stuff like that, even... I mean, like I said, yeah, the, a lot of people who are talking like this do ignore a lot of the underlying things that are going on in places like South Africa where white farmers are being kicked off their land by the federal government and also being murdered in the streets. That is an actual white genocide, and that's something I think every, almost everybody, either right, center, or left, can come to an agreement on. And I wish James would have actually said that example, but he seems to be going with this whole concept that James, that Andrew is, advo is, you know, advocating for this and that that doesn't make any sense. And if Andrew Clavin is really that deeply concerned about raising the average IQ in America, white Americans are the least of his concerns. Finally, this well, yeah. idea that everyone concerned with population replacement is a <laughs> diversion in the basement is simply not true. Many people become aware of these concerns as a result of working and paying taxes and participating in the economy and observing the negative effects of our country's changing demographics. Um, I work. I haven't paid an actual tax per se, but I work with women. I work with a lot of women, particularly white women. I work with a lot of black women. I work with a lot of black dudes. I work with a lot of white guys at my place of, re place of work. I don't care. As long as they're nice to me, I'm nice to them. I don't fuck with them on anything unless they're being a dick to me. Why should, um, and all you identitarians out there are saying, well, why? If one, day, uh, if one day you walk into work and everybody's a black person or an Indian person or stuff like that, you'd be pretty, you, you should be a little worried that they might fire you. Well, first of all, I could if they did fire me because of my race, I could sue them for lawful, unlawful uh, <laughs> termination. Or discriminatory termination, or whatever the fucking term is for it. I could sue them for that. And I would probably win if I got into the right court. But, I mean... I don't see any reason why we should be thinking along this type of scale when it comes to... This stuff, this sort of stuff. Right, because like I said, it's just, I don't see a problem with working with any of these, if, with working with an increasing racial group as, as long, like, look, just as long as they're not being forced into it, let them do it. All right, that's my, that has always been my thing on it. If no one is, like, it's just also my whole thing with forced diversity. If they're forcing diversity, it is a problem and it needs to be fixed. If they want to actually genuinely do diversity, as long as they aren't forcing it, and as long as they're not making a big fucking deal out of it that makes everybody drive away from it, then I can get around it. And I think that's what James is kind of referring to here, but I don't think that's the whole story, per se. But I could be wrong. So, if they really cared about this country... I believe the white supremacists would rethink their Jews will not replace us philosophy and maybe change their slogan to please replace us with Jews as quickly as possible. Yeah, I don't see that one ever catching on. And here's another thing. This Hitler character these white supremacists are so fond of, I'm not sure he was as great a guy as they think he was. Notice what Clavin is doing here. He's trying to reduce everyone further to the right of him into someone who literally just sits around talking about how much they love Hitler. Well, you seem to be the one who loves talking about anyone who's who isn't to the furthest to the right of you is not a true person of the right. You know, gotta have standards with this type of stuff, James. Don't see you actually trying to do it. Clavin isn't a farmer, but he's building a hell of a straw man here. 
the left and the fake right needs this caricature to be true. The fake right? How is Clavin part of the fake right? I just said it. He's a vocal, vocal dude for Trump, okay? He's always been a guy who has been against the left's culture wars that has been going on for a long-ass time. How is he not of the right? All right the fake right, that, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, and it's just deflating your opponent's opinions based on their beliefs and making them into something they're not. All right? This is my entire problem with politics as it is, is dehumanizing your enemy. All right? It's like pulling a Starship Troopers, only there's no arachnids to shoot. Like, is this, like really? I don't get your... I don't see what you're trying to pull here. Well, I see what you're trying to pull here, and it's not going to work with me. And it's not going to work with a lot of people who actually look into this issue. They need everyone concerned about demographics and immigration to be the American History X scary neo-Nazi caricature they've built up in the media. But it simply isn't true. Your average person posting about these issues online, or your average member in Identity Europa, they aren't the caricature the media wants. Okay, um, one, Andrew Clavin is not a part of the mainstream media. Daily Wire, while a mainstream conservative outlet, is not a part of the mainstream media. It will never be a part of the mainstream media until the culture wars actually get fixed. Until everything actually starts being constructed a little bit better so that way conservatives are having their voices skewed at, having their voices basically murdered by the mainstream left which is basically what has been going on for years in mainstream news circles okay Rush Limbaugh it took him a lot of time and effort to become a mainstream radio host all right he's the pimp daddy of most conservative news outlets today because he worked at it. A lot of people didn't like what he had to say, but he managed to get himself into a different... He managed to get himself into a tack that the left didn't take advantage of, and therefore he turned it, or turned it against them. Alright, so this whole idea that Andrew Clavin is part... Andrew Clavin and the Daily Wire are part of the fake right, and they're part of the mainstream media, and that they believe in most of the stuff the mainstream media does, but they're just taking advantage of the conservative movement, which is completely illogical, considering that Ben and Andrew Clavin were writing books for conservative ideals for most of their lives, or at least half of lives look at Ben's. I mean, what the fuck? Seriously, like, what in the living world of fuck are you talking about? The character Clavin is trying to create is simply not accurate. Yes, it is. Okay, there's just... Alright, I am on... Uh, Alright, I've read a lot of comments when it comes to... comes to Jane's videos, criticizing his videos. Now, FYI, the, some of these may have been parodies, but a lot of them seem to be criticizing Ben because he's a dirty Jew. That he's a Jewish man. Alright, and, I little, and I've seen a lot of people on Instagram who criticize him for the same reason, calling him, you know, basically saying he's a Jew. Like, that's a criticism of him? Like, that he's a Jew? I'm not going out there and saying, oh, I hate James Alsop because he's white, or, oh, I hate Donald Trump because he's an orange-haired man, because he's a freaking Cheeto. Like, I, like, ugh. I hate, I hate racial politics with a fucking passion. It's more of an SPLC cartoon, in fact. I mean, sure, he was a creepy little lunatic who caused the needless deaths of over 60 million people. Are we talking about Hitler or Stalin here? But his career wasn't all ruined. Okay, uh... You do know that Stalin killed probably almost a billion people throughout his life. Alright, and yeah, then yeah. Freaking Hitler's numbers would be 60... Million. I don't see how it couldn't be 60 million. I believe that Hitler killed over 60 million people because guess what? He started World War II. Like, how do you not know this? This is common knowledge. Alright? Stalin killed probably 60 million people in the war too, but he had 30 years of... Well, not 30 years of power... Almost, yeah, about 20 years. Of, he was in power for 20 years before World War II started, and he was already fucking shit up, okay? But Hitler, his rise to power was more of a slow, drawn-out thing. 
And once he did, and once he got a control of a lot of areas, thanks to Will, uh, thanks to Chamberlain's appeasement policies, he got what he needed to start the final solution. Alright, I, I think, I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but James seems to be thinking of the small, but, but that, and when you look at World War II's deaths, the Holocaust is kind of small, but when you look at it for racial demographic, then yeah, it's pretty big because that's six million goddamn Jews. But I mean, I'm sure Hitler killed way, prob probably killed 60 million, probably a little bit more. Just, just, to, just to clarify that, all right, I'm a history buff, I gotta do that. After all, the man promised Germany a thousand year Reich and instead turned the place into a rubble strewn vacant lot. Yep. It's not exactly a success story. <laughs> Maybe instead of waving those swastika flags of theirs, the white supremacists should wave flags that say, let's give a big ixnay to the whole Nazi business so we don't kill everyone and destroy the country like Hitler did. Hopefully they'll be smart enough to do that after we have replaced them with Jews. And here we have a combination of two logical fallacies at once, a straw man and a slippery slope. Clavin is insinuating that by caring about demographics or national identity, people like you and I are going to... Oh, what? What? Okay, Andrew Clavin is... what? Uh, no, na I, I am a nationalist. I care about national identity. I, I care about national identity quite a lot. I'm just not out there trying to turn it into a race baiting thing. I like a lot of people try to do. I I am not a race baiter. I am a nationalist for the people of the nation, not a certain race inside that nationalism. This is racial what you're talking about is racial nationalism. I don't think that's what Clavin talks about at all. He's talking to, when he's well You're saying he's talking about regular nationalism. Clavin is not talking about Racial nationalism. He's actually talking about racial nationalism. You, James, you're, all you're talking about is racial nationalism. Well, no, you're talking about regular nationalism and complaining it like Clavin is actually advocating for displacement. But he's not. There's no evidence of that. All right, and I'd already said, there. Just look at his podcast from that time. He did not say a single goddamn thing remotely like what James is trying to spew his words like he is saying right now. ...into America becoming a firebomb shell of a country, with every city resembling Dresden. Again, as an American nationalist and identitarian, I want to put America first. I want the best for America, and I don't want America to be fundamentally transformed. Then stop talking like an identitarian and actually think about things that would actually help Americans in the long run. Like, I don't know, getting rid of the goddamn steel and aluminum tariffs that most of the country agrees is a really stupid decision. How's that going to work out? That's going to kill his approval ratings. That's going to kill the stock market. Okay. And also, I watched Stephen Crowder's show the other Stephen Crowder's show while I was at work today, talking about this exact thing. It seems it seems like we've got ourselves into two logical parallels. Well, not parallels. Uh, two logical. Well, two logical, but also completely illogical conclusions for certain. For certain, for this, for the economy, it's either the economy's doing great, the economy's doing great, and we're we're not tired of winning, maga maga maga, or we're getting screwed over by China. Like you can't have it both ways. It's either we're, the economy's doing really good, or the economy's doing really bad because we're getting screwed over by China. While the economy is doing good, it is faltering because of the Trump. It, Trump is just it's because of the stuff Trump is just letting out of his mouth, and the bad economic policy we're in, and also how bad the staffing situation in this White House is, which has probably led to at least in some part of this fiasco. Okay. Andrew Clavin would call me a white supremacist whose beliefs will result in everyone being killed and the country being destroyed. Nothing could be further from the truth. This is ab absolute propaganda. You want to know what propaganda is, James? You want to know what propaganda is? You really want to know? This is propaganda. This is also propaganda. 